Welcome to Education Matters. Today we'll be talking about the changes in the student teaching process in New Jersey. With us is Peter Shulman, Deputy Commissioner for the Department of Education. Welcome, Peter. Thank you, Ray. Thank you for having us. And we also have with us Chelsea Collins, who is the 2016 New Jersey State Teacher of the Year. Hi, Ray. Thanks for having us. Great to have you, both of you here. Um, teaching, you know, New Jersey has been looking at teaching for a number of years now, improving the quality of teaching in education. And probably the first step in that uh, for a teacher is really the student teaching process. That's where you really get your feet uh, wet in the terms of teaching. Uh, Peter, could you just explain what New Jersey is looking at changing the, the process for this and what basically is that? Sure. Uh, thanks, Ray. The, um, the, the overarching uh, uh, sort of theme for today's conversation is about an expansion to a full year of student teaching experience for the 2018-19 school year. So alternatively in the past, for as many years as we can probably remember, teachers typically did one semester of student teaching. So for us, as we think about the, this in sort of the terms of the overall reform efforts, New Jersey's always been a pioneer, always been an innovator when it comes to educator preparation, educator induction, mentoring, professional development. This is sort of another step in that, in, in that staircase. And what we've done over the last couple of years is we've raised entry and extra requirements, requirements in terms of GPA. We've talked about the expanded clinical, which we'll talk a little bit more about today. We have, uh, imp are, are implementing a performance assessment called the EdTPA, which actually shows the ability for uh, in individuals to demonstrate their pedagogical skills as they move forward. And we've all new data systems to better understand where our, our best candidates are being prepared and how do we learn from that and how do we scale that. So we're very excited about this full year of student teaching and we think it represents one of many important pieces of uh, in improving preparation. And Chelsea, I know you were a teacher of the year and also a cooperating teacher. How do you see this change? It's a great change for, for New Jersey education and in, in pre better preparing our future colleagues. So a year of student teaching will allow teachers to work collaboratively with a cooperating teacher and to be able to experience the challenges that a school year can bring starting in the very beginning of the school year and, and the challenges in the middle of the school year and at the end of the school year and they're going to be alongside of a cooperating teacher for that. So that's really exciting that they're going to be able to enter the classroom for the first time having seen that full year and as well as that performance assessment they're going to be able to design a portfolio of the work that really shows their effectiveness as a teacher and also helps to teach them and instill reflective practice in their practice. Uh, Pete, and Chelsea touched on part of it. This is not just going from one semester to a full year. This is really changing the structure of what happens. It's not handing over the classroom to a, a student teacher in September. So it's a slight difference in the structure. Right, I think the way we think about it, it's not just about quantity, it's about quality. Right? So as we go from one semester to a year, we doubled the amount of time. But what you use that time, or how you use that time for, is uh, of the utmost importance. So as we think about this, as a new teacher comes into a student teaching experience, over the course of two semesters, we want them to eventually take full control of the classroom. But being there in the beginning of the year, being seeing how the norms and the culture of the classroom are set up, gradually taking on lessons, gradually getting in front of a classroom to the point of assuming full responsibility over the course of a year, gives that individual a real sense of what a job being or a vocation of being a teacher would look like. Also gives the, the district the opportunity to really work deeply with an individual in terms of the cooperating teacher, in terms of peer teachers. So we think there's uh, benefits on both sides here, and we're uh, you know we're really excited. Again, you know as we, we go forward, we're going to be counting on our prep programs to be innovative as they always are, and it may not look the same from program to program mm -hmm. and from district to district. Chelsea. Um at this time of the year, parents are looking to see who their teacher is, mm -hmm. you know, and then they're emailing, messaging each other to see who got Mrs. Jones and all that. Some parents might be apprehensive to see a student teacher in the classroom. Uh, how do you deal with that apprehension? I think with this new model, it, uh, parents can feel much more comfortable with having student teachers in the classroom because the student teacher and the cooperating teacher are essentially working together in a co-taught model uh, in order to help students to grow. So as Pete said, there could be a student teacher running the full class lesson, the whole group lesson, but the cooperating teacher may be pulling students out and providing differentiated instruction or vice, ver vice versa. So really it's just uh, helping uh, teachers to meet the needs of students and putting more educators within the classroom that can do that. Um, you know, we talked about the uh, extended time, but there's also a change in how you evaluate the student teacher. 
you do, and I understand there's a video component to that. Right. So I mentioned earlier sort of this Ed TPA. So it's a performance assessment. And you know, dating back, uh, I guess, two or three years now, we introduced a regulatory package that would ask every teacher not only to sort of do the requirements of a preparation program, including the student teaching, including taking the practice subject matter test, but taking a new element called a performance assessment, which actually shows not only are you an expert in your subject matter, not only have you completed all your course requirements and the, and the clinical teaching, but during that clinical time, submitting a portfolio of your work, including a video that shows your pedagogical skill actually in practice. And to be scored by a third party to say, this is an individual who's sort of what we call learner ready. They're ready to become a certified teacher in New Jersey. And you think that, as you were a student teacher, I, I assume at one point yes. too. And do you think that is like a, a better model for a student teacher? Absolutely. I think being able to have additional feedback in your practice is always helpful to be able to have that, that extra set of eyes. And I think this portfolio method also helps our practitioners to be more reflective practitioners, which we know is important for a teacher to have not only at the start of their career, but as they develop as educators as well. So instilling those ideas of looking at our practice and always trying to push uh, ourselves further is, is something that we want all of our practitioners to have. Now, in some fields, uh, in some school districts, they have what they call alternate route uh, certification. Is there any changes in, uh, as in that field, too? So every uh, sort of element of our change process that I articulated earlier with exit requirements, and new GPA requirements, and expanded clinical, and now the performance assessment, there's a parallel structure for our alternative routes. So we want to make sure, as we think about uh, candidates coming out of our preparation programs, or traditionally called our traditional prep programs, these are our, uh, mostly our colleges and universities, Rowan, Stockton, Rutgers, as well as our alternative programs, that all of these teachers are prepared equally. So in this case, during their, uh, during their two-year typically alternative route program, they will take the EdTPA, and it will be a requirement for them for continued certification as well. So in some ways, everyone's held equally the same high bar. Uh, and, you know, we're discussing this, and it's the 2016-2017 school year. Uh, and for a lot of people, I've talked to them, they didn't realize this was has occurred, but this goes back a couple of years, and then full implementation is uh, down the road. Could you just give us the calendar? Sure. Well, it's important to step back for a moment. So we actually initially proposed these regulations in 2013. And then as we thought about it in class re regulations for alternative programs, as you said, in 2014, and went through a, a public procurement process throughout the 2015 school year. So as we think about 16-17 as being somewhat of a pilot year, and 17-18 uh, being, um, uh, being a year, basically, by which everyone takes the test, right? And participation is in, in indicative of a passing rate. And then 18-19 being the first year where there's actually a cut score where folks have to actually demonstrate proficiency to receive their certification. Okay, I'd like to thank Chelsea, and I'd like to thank Peter for joining us on this Education Matters. I hope you found it informative, the changes in the student teaching. If you need more information, uh, we have a link at the end of this program. Thank you.